In this video, I want to introduce you to the basics of using lights in Unreal Game Engine. Now, what I've done here is I've already made just a default project with the default content, but what we're actually going to do here is we are going to make a brand new blank project. The reason that I actually want to do this is so that you don't have the skylight or any pre um, lighting sources such as the light source, the skylight, or the atmospheric fog already set in the game level. This way you'll be able to see the lighting much better whenever you're working with it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new level and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an empty level. So real quick here I'm going to go ahead and save current as and I'm going to go ahead and just call this light demo for my map. So right now, as you can see, it is a completely blank environment. Uh, you can actually see here over in the world outliner, you have absolutely nothing present here. No spawning, no nothing. For this demonstration, that's fine. We don't really need that. It's more about looking at the lights. One thing I am going to do, though, is before I come over to the place actor panel and jump directly into lights, I am going to go ahead and just grab and place a plane in the environment I'm going to make this a little bit larger as far as its scale just so that I have something for the lighting to reflect off of. So let's take a look at some of the basic lights here. Probably some of the big ones that you're going to want to work with are things like the directional and the point and the spotlight. Now to start out here, when you want to place a light in the game environment, it's very similar to things like Unity where you just click, drag, and you drop your lighting source into the game environment. Now, a couple of things before we dive into the details of lighting in Unreal. First off, up in the upper left-hand corner of your preview window where you're working, pretty much any time that you add lighting in, it's going to start kind of giving you this red warning that the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Now, if lighting starts to become an issue for you, you can actually come up also, there is a lit option, you can actually choose unlit, where it won't actually render out the scene with the lighting and the shadows that come from specific objects. This can help with performance on lower end machines. However, I'm going to turn lit back on just so we can take a look here. Now a directional light, normally what that means is this is going to be lighting an entire area as far as the environment goes. Now what I'm going to do is come over to the right side here. Since I don't have a lot in the world outliner, I'm going to scale up and bring up the details for the directional light. First off, just like any other object in Unreal, you can control the rotation, scale, etc., the location, or you can use your widgets directly in the game environment. However, what I want to point out is you can change as far as the lux or the illumination is concerned. So you see as I scroll through here, the brighter, as you can see, it kind of almost washes out my game object, but if I take it all the way down, I've now lost all the lighting. Another thing too that you can work with is the light color here. To actually change your light color, you just click on the bar here and it will bring up a color picker for you. Now I need to pull this up a little bit because to commit your light change, you're going to have to come and hit OK. So let's say I change this more to a blue. One nice thing about working in a lit environment is you can actually see the changes as far as the lighting is concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Some other things that you can change here include as far as the angle or source soft angle goes. However, with a directional light and until you add an object into the environment, you're not going to see this too much. So let's actually take a moment here. I'm going to come back and let me grab a piece of geometry here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a box into the environment here. Just so you can kind of see now, okay, so you have an object in your game environment, uh, what's actually going to be happening while you're working here. One of the first things to show you here, as far as the lighting goes, is what Unreal is going to do. Not only is it going to be telling you when you place the lighting that it needs to be rebuilt, it is going to try to generate the shadow for you. 
A note on shadows though, you can see it's starting to say preview until you actually build the lighting. And that's gonna be later on in this video here. It's going to try to generate and give you a general idea of what the shadow is going to look like, but it's not a production level shadow. So let's come ahead, go ahead here and come back to the lighting. So some things you need to remember with lights in general, not so much just even the directional light. The light coloring will affect textures and materials as far as how they look. However, some other things that your lighting can control, for instance, is under light here, there's a cast shadow option. Depending on the type of light you choose will depend on if you can actually control if something casts a shadow. If you are going for realism, it's in my opinion, a rarity, you're actually gonna not want a shadow cast because in the real world, even no matter how low the lighting is, you're always casting shadows, even if they are very, very subtle. So that's one way you can work with the lights. So that's kind of your directional light. This is a great option that if you're looking to kind of flood a scene with a specific light, definitely a great option. Now, let me go ahead here and show you a point light. Point lights are just that. They're more kind of area based. And as you can see, the moment I place this, let me zoom out a little bit for you. You see this giant spherical area here. That's the spread as far as the uh, radius of the overall light is concerned. Now it does have similar options here. Let me zoom back in. It has similar options to its directional light counterpart as far as its intensity. So I can kind of take that up and down. And notice how it's kind of mixing and kind of doing a gradient as far as how it's reflecting. And you can even see it kind of affecting the shadow here that the directional light is placing. Now, a couple of things that you can also work with is you can change its intensity here. So if I maybe bring down the intensity a little bit, again, you're going to need to rebuild your lighting. You can actually see here, it's really small, but now it's yelling at me that I have two lights I need to rebuild. Also too, again, you can affect as far as its shadows go. So you see how I'm losing that cut angle there. I can also change the radius of my light. So if I wanted to make much tighter, uh, this is a great choice that if you have an animation of a torch, for instance, uh, this is often a very common choice to put around the torch and just really tighten up that radius there. I can change the color here. So maybe if I go more to like a red here. I also want to point out here, you see how you're getting that blending going on as far as the reaction to the directional light. So again, I have to move up my color picker a little bit. I'll say OK. But that's kind of what a point light does. So again, going back, directional lights, great for kind of flooding an environment. Point lights, uh, great for uh, lights that are giving off light in all directions. My Always my big choice is uh, using you know, torches in a video game. Now, next up, I have the spotlight. And the spotlight, if you think of uh, theater, same idea here. It's going to be a specific point, And as you can see, it has a much different kind of layout in comparison to its counterparts. So it is just that. It's in a cone. So a couple of things here. Just like its counterpart, you can change the intensity, the light color. But some of the things that you might want to change is, you know, the overall radius of how far. So let me zoom back in so you can see this a little better. So there you can see as far as my radius goes, you can also change as far as do you want it to be a very tight light or do you want it to be, you know, a little bit more spread out here. I'll actually change the intensity so you can see it. You can also change as far as the softness of the light is concerned. And you can also even change as far as an inner cone radius, as far as the softness of the edges or the spread. You know, do you want it to just be a super hard spotlight or do you want to have that fade going on with the outer area there? So I'll go ahead and I'll kind of pull this over here. Let's see if we can kind of get this cutting through the edge. There we go and then kind of pull that down a little bit. So there you can also see it's starting to kind of affect the shadows there. Notice though how it's not slicing 
through the ge uh, geometry object there. So Unreal will recognize that, hey, this is a solid. And then the last light I wanna show you here is the rectangular light. The rectangular light I actually really like. Um, it's great for overhead neon lights if you are trying to have lighting come in through, say, a window or a doorway. This is an excellent choice for a light here. One of the first things you may actually notice here that makes it a little bit different from the other uh, three here is notice how it kind of has this box effect going on around it. And also you can actually see right on the base here on the plane, you've got a very hard edge going on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to change the intensity so we can see that a little bit better. And I'm also gonna change the color here into like a really bright green, just so we can see that. Now, the one difference here with the rectangle lights is what these are called are barn doors. So I can actually change as far as both the angle, as far as the opening of the barn door, uh, as far as the angle goes, but I can also change as far as the length here. So I can even cut a little bit further as far as making it kind of getting an almost like a little doorway effect going on there. You can also change as far as the width. So maybe you have windows, or again, here's like an example, like maybe I have a neon light shining down. I can change the width and I can also change as far as the overall height as well there. So this is definitely a light here that I really like being able to play with. Uh, I think it's a very flexible light. Um, again, you can rotate it, work with it, uh, so on and so forth. So those are kind of the core lights there that you can work with. Last but by no means least, you do have the overall skylight. This would be in combination if you were working with something like, say, oh, uh, let's see here. If you were working with as far as your atmospheric fog here, this is actually what controls as far as the sunlight is concerned or lighting an entire environment. Also gives you a lot of control. Going to save these two though for a future video. In this video though, the last thing I wanna talk about is the build process. So here, just to kind of take you back, you've played with some lights, but notice now you're shadowing, you should be seeing kind of, even on this other side here, you're seeing this previewing going on. And up in the corner here, up in that left-hand corner again, you know, Unreal's yelling at you about lighting needs to be rebuilt. That's fine. Grand scheme of things, you can come up to your menu bar here and just hit build. The thing is though, you just hit the build button, it's going to build everything and compile everything for you in the level. Oftentimes when you're just working with lighting, you don't need that to happen. This adds on time, wait time that you're having to go through and wait for everything else to be built. There is a build option menu drop down bar that you can actually build lighting only. So when you get to the point in your game level that you're saying, okay, I'm working with lighting and I just need to work and uh, update my lighting, this is a good choice. So you tell it to build the lighting, it's gonna think about it. Now, again, depending on how much lighting you have added in, it's going, it might take a little bit of time there as far as the building process is concerned. This can be a little bit intensive, but you can see on my machine, I'm, it's now removed the warnings. It's also removed the previews. I now have a much better idea of what the game level is going to look like in the final published process. So hopefully this video has given you just again, basic look at some of your four core lighting elements that you may use both indoors and outdoors, as far as being able to uh, add some lighting and atmospheric effects to your game level.